Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. My name is Hemant Khot. I'm working with Red Hat. So today we would be talking about security benefits of free IPA. Considering the audience and difficulty level as beginner, I have created this session. So you will be getting a introduction and idea about the free IPA. Overview. Uh, after this session, you would be able to identify what is free IPA, what are the use cases, I mean the integration, wherein you can fit a free IPA in your organization, security benefits of free IPA, that is how you can use the free IPA in your organization to build up a security. And then last but not the least, future scope of free IPA moving forward. So when I say free IPA, those who don't know about the free IPA, they might be thinking, thinking that, is it something free and then IPA collectively called as free IPA? Yes, it's the same way. Free IPA is upstream project and downstream it is called as Red Hat Identity Management. Likewise, it is free upstream with the downstream, with the Red Hat, if you have REL subscription, you can use it free of cost. Now, what is free IPA? Free IPA or IDM is having collectively all Linux native tools, and they have created a bundle of a software or application, which will have different component inside it. 389 DS, which is acting as LDAP, the backend, to store all the information, such as your user information, your certificates, your groups, and whatever you want to store in your free IPA, considering the its, its data. MIT Kerberos, MIT Kerberos used by free IPA for the Kerberos authentication. Doctag, when you want to go ahead and set up a CA server, this, this component will help you out with free IPA in order to communicate all the different services. So the different services which are present in IPA communicate with each other using the certificates issued by this doctor. To make it simple and easier for some of the Linux administrator who are not much comfortable with CLI, Free IP also has web UI. So if you want to get a high level overview, it would be something like this, wherein you would see that these are the components using which you can interact with the free IPM. Now, what are the use cases? So when I say use cases, uh, you might be thinking, is it something that how I can use free IPA, where I can use free IPA, why I can, you know, why I should use free IPA? So the first question will come in my mind, can I use free IPA in my organization? I mean, when we are discussing about free IPA, you tell me, can I use it in my free uh, in my organization? So the answer is yes, you can use it in your organization. Can I integrate with Active Directory? Now we know that uh, you know I'll I'll be very generic when I compare free IPA. I would like to compare it with the Active Directory, which is widely used by most of the organization. Then. Uh, can I integrate with VMware? So uh, most of the customers rely on VMware in order to have some of the VMs for testing and development purposes. So is it possible to integrate VIPA with a VMware? So yes, it's quite possible. Moving on, can I integrate OpenStack? Can I integrate uh, Overt? Overt is again uh, alternate open source solution to VMware. And then OpenShift, can I use OpenShift with free IPA? So, I mean, there are tons of uh, integrations possible with free IPA. I, I have not included entire list of it, but yes, if you want to find a list, you can just simply visit this link and you would be able to find the third party application integration with a free IPA. Now, can I use a free IPA in my organization? So basically, when I want to compare it, I, I have chosen the AD which is most widely used by uh, customers. So the first question would be, uh, my Active Directory gives me the user authentication. So does the free IPA. Uh, it has privileged access management. 
the name itself says uh, wherein free IPA. IPA stands for identity policy and audit. So yes, it also provides you the privilege access management wherein you can restrict, you can define the access to be given to certain specific users to host and to specific services. Replication, I can do replication with my Active Directory, whereas I can do the trust. It is quite possible with Active Directory. With free IPA, yes, you can do replication. One replica can handle up to 20K clients of free IPA. When it comes to trust, uh, as of now, free IPA is able to perform, able to do the trust with Active Directory. Free IP, IPA trust uh, is uh, still, I mean, we, we are evaluating that part. Then uh, in the Active Directory, we have the sites, sites option available to ensure that the connectivity within the specific location or specific sites is improved so that it don't have to go to other location for connectivity. Uh, same thing is available with the free IPA called as DNS location. So let's say if you have a branch in New York, so the systems within the New York should get connected to that specific DNS location server. LDAP, we already know that LDAP is one of the component of free IPA. Certificate service, yes, uh, certificate service is available with the free IPA. You can issue certificates for the users, for the host and for the services. Tightly integrated and flexible security. Well, these are the terms uh, which are, uh, I mean, I, I would, uh, I would like to give a definition in the layman language. Tightly integrated and flexible security. We have all possible uh, tunable configuration with free IP wherein you can achieve uh, your requirement. Just, uh, you know, uh, in, in order to achieve that, you should know the capabilities of free IP and how to do that. A DNS. Uh, DNS is one of the component of free IPA. So yes, you can also manage your DNS using the free IPA. Kerberos, I have already given the information that Kerberos is uh, available with the free IPA for the authentication, which is MIT Kerberos. Now you could see almost all the features which are available with Active Directory are almost present with the free IPA. I have not uh, mentioned the entire list of all possible features, but I just try to compare with a highly used feature by the customers. Now, can I integrate with Active Directory? Now we have compared it with Active Directory, so can I integrate with Active Directory? So it says, yes, uh, you just need to set up a trust with Active Directory in order to share the Linux resources with, with AD. So this would be something like this. You have IDM domain, you have the AD domain, you create a trust between them. And once you have the successful trust, your AD resources would be able to access your Linux resources. Moving further, can I integrate with VMware? Uh, yes, you can integrate with VMware. You can, in, in fact, you can of you can achieve SSO with VMware with the help of free IPA. It's just that you need to set up free IPA as an identity provider with your vCenter server appliances. So it would be like when you want to perform the SSO authentication, uh, your authentication provider, your identity provider should be set as a free IPA, and then you can achieve the SSO as well. OpenStack plus free IPA. Uh, well, uh, with the OpenStack, uh, Keystone would be your service provider and KeyClock would be your identity provider. With the help of this identity provider, you can actually access the uh, dashboard of it uh, without revealing your credentials. So it is quite possible to have the OpenStack and free IPA integration as well. Now OpenShift, uh, we have we have seen IPA and AD trust. So let's say I have IPA and AD trust available in my environment, but now I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to do some testing with OpenShift. Can I make use of my current environment in order to access the OpenShift? Yes, that is quite possible. You can also do that. So I'm just giving you an idea, high overview, wherein you can fit in the IPA as per your requirement. Over uh, the same way, you, you would be configuring the uh, your identity source as free IPA. And here you will see that once you are trying to access the console, 
it, it will check the back end it will check for the user and then it will allow you for any of your, its web services web app or any resource that you are trying to access within the overt uh now coming to the core part of our discussion i just wanted you to understand what is free ipa and wherein you can use free ipa so you will understand what are the other security features that can be used or how they can be used to build security now first uh smart card authentication when i say smart card authentication uh, you would be having a smart card with you you will just chip in your smart card to the system and you will get authentication authenticated to the system now with the help of free ipa you can also configure two factor authentication first you will chip in your smart card then you will chip in your password or you will input your password and then bingo you got authenticated to the system but let's try to understand uh, if i have uh, multiple users and i i do not have the certificates i just wanted to share single certificate with multiple users can i make use of this use case yes it's quite possible uh, you can distribute the same uh, certificate with multiple users it's just that you need to use or make use of username hint feature so when you have when a user tries to authenticate with smart card certificate that matches to multiple user accounts the following will occur now if the username hit policy is enabled user is prompted for the name and then proceed with the authentication if the username hint policy is disabled ipa won't be able to identify which user is actually trying to access the system because the same certificate is shared by multiple users so that is where the authentication will fail without prompting now host based access control the hback hback is one of uh, i i would say one of the easy and um, easy to implement feature let's say uh, you have a system a system b system c d and e wherein you just want to allow specific access to specific servers you can make use of hback you can allow them to perform ssh you can make them uh, allow to do the sudo access on those specific system or you can allow the entire access to ent uh, you know uh, quite uh, other systems so let's say i want to allow cde with full access but i just want to restrict the ssh access to a it is quite possible with free ipa you can you can make use of hback feature certificates as i mentioned the doc tag is acting as a core component of free ipa you can make use of that component in order to issue certificates now these are three different types of certificates that can be issued by free ipa host certificate a certificate for the host let's say if i am issuing a certificate for the host i can make use of that certificate for configuring a different services or i can uh make use of service certificate which would be specific to the specific service as an example i would take https that is the apache certificate we all are aware about it then user certificate i can i can issue a certificate to specific user in order to uh authenticate that user with a certificate now password policy uh password policy is uh, uh, let's say one of the important feature of free ipa wherein you can define the maximum lifetime you can define minimum lifetime of uh, user history size then uh, the character classes wherein you can define the complexity level the upper case lower case and then you can define the minimum length of uh, the password maximum failure failure reset after interval let's say for an example now we all are working from home so uh, if i am typing in my password for three times and what if my account got locked you can you can use the failure reset interval option and you your id will get your password will get reset after the specified time duration the lockout duration now idm in fips uh, this is something which is um, highly demanded by customers who are actually using fips so uh, we can proudly say that uh, this ipa this I idm is compatible with free ipa uh, now 
uh, I'm sorry, compatible with FIPS. Now, what is FIPS? FIPS is Federal, uh, Federal Information Processing Standard. It's a publication 140 by 2, uh, 140-2 is a computer security standard. So uh, some of the customers who are following this FIPS standard, they were not able to make use of free IPA. So now a free IPA is compatible with FIPS. You can make use of it and you can have this IDM in your FIPS enabled environment. So for uh, Red Hat identity management, I have shared the list wherein you can find the documented uh, response for the FIPS enabled system can have IP, IDM. And for IPA as well, I have mentioned the link. Now moving on to single sign-on, uh, I, I have seen uh, most of the customers are actually looking forward uh, for for such feature wherein they have to type their password only once and then it should get authenticated to uh, all the service and you know everywhere wherever possible. So how that can be achieved? Let's say uh, for an example, I will take an example of uh, Red Hat single sign-on. If you configure your Red Hat single sign-on with Red Hat Identity Management, once you authenticate with your SSO, you would be able to access your host, your services, as well as you can uh, the, I mean, the resources which you are trying to access, those can be also uh, accessed, though those can be also used or uh, I'm sorry, uh, the resources which you want to uh, make use of that can be also uh, accessed using this SSO feature. Now RBAC, uh, talking about RBAC, this is a role-based access control. Uh, it, it, is, it actually holds uh, three parts. One is permission, second is privilege, and third is role. Now how exactly uh, we should define this RBAC? So permissions will grant you right to perform the specific task such as adding, deleting users or modifying a group or enabling the read access. Now privileges. Privilege is where you would be combining this permission to, uh, let's say if you want to add a new user, you can combine those permissions because when you try to add a new user, you would require specific permissions wherein you can define uh, the groups where it should get associated with the name, the UID, all these things. You can make use of RBAC and using this RBAC, you can define specific rules to specific users. Now, if I want to give an example of RBAC, uh, I will try to uh, give you details using the already available information. So let's say if we want to have a group of people who would be working under help desk team who uh, their job is to modify the user and reset the password so you can simply assign this role to those specific users or the group of those users and your job will be simpler you don't have to uh, you know keep on assigning simple uh, every other permissions or privileges to those users so likewise we already have predefined set of a rule a roles uh, which you can make use of now sudo uh, sudo is something uh, sudo is actually available with the base os but why we are actually calling uh, calling it out with the free ipa is because this is where you centrally store the sudo rules you store the rules centrally and those get get retrieved by the clients and those get passed by uh, the client um, client utility and making use of those rules if the access is allowed that will be permitted else it will be denied for the pseudo operation now everybody is moving towards ansible so i just thought of giving an ansible example wherein we'll create a rule ips pseudo rule uh, if you see at the end state is present a uh, username is idm user and host is idm client so on the IDM client, I want to define the user should be able to perform the reboot only. So I'll, I'll simply write this rule and I'll deploy on specific machine, ensuring that I have already maintained my inventory. You can also uh, make use of the already available 
Ansible configuration script under the user shared doc Ansible free IPA. But uh, in order to use Ansible free IPA, you should have this Ansible free IPA package installed. Now, uh, as we are talking about the Ansible uh, with free IPA, we have these many modules and these many features already present. So you can simply use any one of them and fulfill your requirement. You don't have to go on each server and do the task. Uh, last, but uh, second last, uh, it is quite interesting. Uh, nowadays, we are uh, we we are getting news about the security uh, breaches wherein a sim single authentication wherein uh, people are getting security breach. So yes, you can you uh, make a use of this OTP with free IP. You have HOTP and TOTP available. So HOTP is your hash message authentication code and TOTP is your time-based authentication code. This is this would be available for the specific time. I'll just give you a uh, screenshot to un make you understand. I have simply accessed the demo machine of free IPA. I created uh, the time-based OTP and after fulfilling the information, I got this uh, QR code, which I would be scanning with the application. Okay, uh, here you would be able to see uh, the tokens which are already enabled on the system. I make I make use of free OTP wherein I'll just request for the OTP and while authenticating along with my password, I would be entering the OTP. Now encrypted backup. Everybody a, is taking the backup to ensure that, you know, in, in case of crash or in case of a power failure or a system issues, hardware failure, we can make use of those backup, but what if those backup files are, uh, you know, used by some other third party person? So you can encrypt your backups as well. You just need to install the prerequisite packages. And once you have installed, you just need to do some configuration. And once you have configured, you can, uh, you can passphrase your GPG and making use of that IPA backup hyphen GPG, you would be able to encrypt your backup. Identity management. Admin mechanism in one central place, the IDM server. Centrally manage the different type of credentials such as password, PK certificates, OTP tokens, SSH keys. Apply policies to multiple machines at the same time. Manage POSIX and other attributes for external Active Directory users. Uh, and the list goes on. I mean. Uh, uh, there are n number of things that you can do with free IPA, provided that what actually is your use case or what is your requirement, you should look uh, for that uh, specific feature or uh, uh, the requirement and you, uh, free IPA would be able to fulfill it. Now, uh, the future features, uh, we, we are trying to integrate with uh, the USB guard. We are trying to uh, make it uh, compatible with MS Kyle specifications, which uh, you can you can find on the Microsoft uh, website support for the Go global catalog. Uh, we are also trying to make sure that you know users are able to do most of the task using UI and support one time sessions well, such as a guest is there and he just wanted to use for for a specific session. He just want to make use of IPA so they can do that. Uh, future scope of free IPA moving forward, uh, we are primarily focusing on robustness, stability, and testing, and the troubleshooting capabilities to make uh, users and the system administrator job easier.